All right. Zero percent low Ted. Let's do this. So I'm gonna like skip series. Is uh, yeah, that part sucks. So yeah. Um. I guess the first thing would be to explain where this whole thing is going. So let's just like look at it goal by goal. The main goal, number one goal, is to get into the first heated room of Norfair, that one to the right there, and uh, like to the right of the Norfair Business Center, and go in there and do the out of bounds that will um, remove all your items. So, well, it doesn't remove all your items, it tells the game that you don't have them. There's two like RAM addresses that deal like deal with how you have items and stuff. The first address is does she have the item? So like if she pauses and goes to her item screen, is the item listed there? But that also is the RAM value that's used for like whatever RAM value that is, that's also the one that's used for determining percentage. The second one is uh is it equipped? That one is just whether or not it's currently on, and that one doesn't do anything else. It just makes it so that Samus is wearing the item. And so, this can be exploited by using the block um, 0F42. I just forgot the blocks. Is it 44? I just completely blanked on what block it is. 0F44. Using that block to make the game think that you don't have the items, but it'll still leave them equipped. So this was discovered like pretty long time ago. I was working on this route for a while, so on and off, you know. Sometimes you get tired because you know every time you try something, it doesn't work and everything. So, but then I had this breakthrough, and I'll get to that later. So right now I'm just grabbing the standard stuff. Um, you're gonna notice me saving in Parlor and then like copying my file. This is actually a multi-file method, so I'm also going to be on the other file. I'm going to be doing GT code and then going uh, and doing some out of bounds there. So I'm going to skip most GT code stuff because that's just normal boring stuff, like actual runs. Ew! I just want the glitches. So anyway, back to zero F44. We call it God Block because it can do a lot of things. It does basically completely different things every for like whatever your X position is at the time and it even includes subpixel position but the pixel position affects what happens the subpixel um, position affects like kinda what happens after because almost always it like does a block shuffle effect afterwards so that can be kinda dangerous so usually we do subpixel perfect movement like normalized type movement to make sure that we don't uh, don't get sent into some weird abyss of random crap blocks so I'm gonna go see. Uh, oh, I'm gonna get bombs first. <laughs> I was like, "What's going on?" Um, so yeah, that's that's the main goal: is go into that room with with X-ray and Varia, because without Varia, you're gonna die. Uh, X-ray and Varia, bombs, and not necessarily high jump. Uh, that, that I tested it twice. Because it doesn't matter what major items you pick up, because like I said, they're just going to get removed. The only major items that aren't included in that are, um, I think, reserves and E-tanks and beams. So it's just the actual items, like the power-ups type items. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't really matter what you pick up. And so I tested the out-of-bounds with high jump on and with high jump off, and it just turned out to be easier like in general to you do it with high jump on so you don't technically need to have high jump when you go there but I choose to have it because I can so it's uh morph bombs x-ray high jump area so that's the five like items that you want to get there with so here's where I save and then I'm just gonna reload the reload the thing um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to skip this because it doesn't really matter. So basically, I just copy my file. I'll, I'll wait for that part at least. I copy my file and then 
Um, oh yeah, so to do the file copy, I use turbo, but my turbo is set super high, so like it looks like I ha like I'm just sitting here doing nothing, but it's really just I press turbo for like half a second. Um, so there you go, I copied my file, um, and then this is just GT code. You can see, um, I come over here and just do GT code. I enter with like basically nothing and I do GTQ. So that's that. And then we want to go back to parlor with all this stuff. So the reason we're doing multi-file is to set up parlor a certain way. Um, if you do out of bounds in parlor, so here we go. There's going to be some out of bounds that I do in parlor. And then when I, uh, when I reload my other file, the changes that I made to the out of bounds in parlor will actually stay in effect. So I'm going to create the 0 f 44 I'm resetting to normalize out of bounds. You'll see that a lot lately, or in this run at least. Um, I don't know. I don't think I necessarily had to do that, but I wanted to do it just to be safe. So I did it. Um, but yeah, so the changes that I make to out of bounds in this file generally will stay when I load my second file. So I'm just going to create 0 f 44 using X-Ray, and then uh, and just reload my other file, and I'll have a 0 f 44 in the Out of Bounds below Parlor. And what that'll do is allow me to just do door skip and grab it. Uh, so right now my goal is to get Power Bounds, because, like I said, you can remove all your major items, but now we're running into our first issue, which is, uh, how do you get your minor items, you know? Because there's only one minor item that you can get rid of, and that's missiles, by reloading the intro cutscene. Which I'll get into later when that happens. Uh, real quick, right now we're just x-ray climbing. You should be familiar with this technique, uh, if you're watching this. So, right there I was x-climbing like, x like crap, and then I just turned on my, uh, in the recording I just turned on my like, script that x-ray climbs for me. So it's going pretty efficiently right now. Uh, but yeah, so the first issue is, uh, well, how do we get those items in the first place? Like, to get X-Ray, you need at least power bombs, you know? And we can get power bombs, but like, like we can even get them without getting super missiles. But then, what do you do with them? You know, you can't really get rid of them. Thankfully, 0F44 helps with that. So right now, I'm just doing some normalized out-of-bounds movement to uh, ensure that I don't, like, screw myself over. When I was making this, I had my hitbox viewer on anyway, but uh, this is mostly to show the movement. It was really for me for future reference, like, okay, this is how you do these rooms because you're going to forget, and it helped, it helped me a lot. So anyway, we're just space jumping up here. So, like, notice, like, I wouldn't have been able to, like, technically I could have done this, and I have in my other file without, um... Without doing a multi-file thing. But, well, I would have had the multi-file as a thing. Because I can't go and get power bombs to get x-ray. I need to use 0F44 to get power bombs. I guess I'll just finish explaining this first and then it'll stop being confusing. So, we figured out with 0F44 a couple things. Um, as far as minor items go, so missiles, supers, power bombs, you can... So now I'm just pixel perfectly aligning myself so that I can do this x-ray. I'll explain this in one second. So, as far as minor items go, you can do a couple things. They have the same variable, or the same RAM addresses, where it's like, do you have them? And then are they equipped? But it's slightly different. It's, um, oh, I want to pause real quick. So, right here, you can see I created 0F44 right here. So you'll notice, like, remember all this stuff around it, because you'll be seeing this again. So right now, this block up here is also 0F44. I don't want it to be... Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> this is the one that I'm going to be using. This is the one that I don't want to be 0F44. I want these all to be, like... Well, not this. I want these all to be nice blocks that I can walk through whenever I please, because I'm going to be jumping off of here to, to touch this, because I don't have high jump. So I don't want to stand on this and then crash when I stand on it, because most of the expositions with 0 44 make you crash. So I'm just going to do a small x-ray right here. Um, so, like, that changed a couple of the blocks, but now they're all safe blocks, so you just x-ray and then turn around immediately, and it uh, fixes that. 
Uh, this is a cool shine spike up like this. You have to do it crouched or else you'll hit the door with a certain uh, X position or Y position that'll make you spawn out of bounds in the next room. If you do it while standing, then you'll be stuck. Anyway, minor items have the same type of equipped and have type thing. The only difference is with them, it's not equipped and have. It's um, like how much ammo you have and how much you currently have. And the game tracks... No, wait, what am I saying? It's how much ammo you have and how much you can hold at max. So the games calculate a percentage that go off of your max, because if they went off how much you currently had, that would be really stupid. So what they do is they just take your... Uh, at the end of the game, it doesn't calculate a percentage till the very end of the game. What it does is, whatever your RAM address is for uh, items have, it calculates that, and it goes, oh, they have, you know, six items. And then it does the same thing with the, there's a different address for beams, and then I think there's one for E-Tanks and Reserves, or th that might be mixed in with one of the other ones. So then it calculates all those ones, and then for minor items it goes, alright, what's their max? Divide that by 5, and then add that number to the percentage. So if my max is 20, then, the like if, I, if my max power bombs is 20, divide that by 5, that's 4. That means I picked up 4 power bomb packs, and that checks out for all minor items, because it gives you 5 every time you grab them. So, with that, we can use 0F44 to make the game, to change our RAM addresses yet again, and to say, alright, make my power bombs current ammo be whatever RAM number, in this case it's 127. So make my current ammo 127, but make my um, max stay at 0. And there's even a method that like changes your current ammo to 127 and then like, switches your max to 0. And there's also ones where, like, whatever amount you currently have, it'll just set your max to zero. So there's a bunch of different things you can do. Um, right now I'm trying to do door skip. I don't know why I didn't just do this with frame advance. There we go. Um, so yeah, door skip. All right, so now we're in basically that same area. So i um, not sure if anyone's familiar with this, but rooms loop vertically and horizontally. So if we had gone to the left over here and dropped down, we'd be in the area above parlor, like up here, that you were just seeing when I was out of bounds before. So that means that right now, we should be in the area where 0 44 is. And if you recognize this pattern that I mentioned earlier, some of the blocks change it. These are purple now, because that x-ray thing I did. So this is 0 44 right here. So I could, oh, no, it's up here. So this is 0 44 up here. I could grab it right now. It's a little bit off screen. I could grab it right now and like do some cool stuff, but we're not quite at the right x position yet. And I have to go about like 35 screens to the right, something like that, like an annoying number. So I'm just going to be doing a couple mock balls over here. Um, but this gives me time to keep explaining things. So there's a bunch of different things you can do to manipulate your ammo. Like you can just set your max to zero. You can, you know, change what you currently have and what your max is. It, there's a whole gamut of things. Um, but like... I'm I'm saying it where it's like, oh, just tell it to do this. But it's not quite as simple as that. We need to, like, check a bunch of random expositions to find the thing that we need. And then in some rooms, it'll, like... Like, in some rooms, you know, position uh, 3, 4, 9, 2, 1 will make me get all major items. But then in, like, a different room, 3, 4, 9, 2, 1 will crash the game. So it's really annoying uh, trying to get all the stuff to work. So... That's kind of where a lot of the uh, testing went. The main thing was when Snick discovered 0 44 shoutouts to Snick for all the discoveries and such. Um, when Snick discovered 0 44 he told me, he was like, yo, go check a bunch of rooms and either create 0 44 or just find it in the room. Um, it would be best if you could just find it in the room. And then figure out a way to use it to make Samus's have thing be set to zero. So he gave me the RAM addresses and he was like, yo, go do this workhorse. So I was like, alright. It took me a couple weeks or so and then I ended up finding, I actually found a couple places where you could do it, but they weren't really the right places. Uh, like there was one in Red Tower that you could do, but you needed to have supers to do that and we didn't know a method to get rid of supers so we were just like, eh, it'll probably be easier to find a uh, an area, a different area, you know. So, Actually, no, we couldn't do it in Red Tower, but we were really excited because in Red Tower, there's a uh, there's just a 0F44 that's already there, 
so you don't need to create it or anything. And we actually, since then, have figured out a couple things you can do with it, but we have yet to figure out major items removal, which would be really useful if we could, because that would change the route a good bit. Anyway, I make it slightly faster. Anyway, I ended up figuring out that you can do it in that first heated room in Norfair. Um, so here's that normalized movement I was talking about. Right now I'm doing a couple bunny hops. Uh, if you hold L and R and then try to move forward, she won't move forward. Um, so what we do is we hold L and R and then jump. And she'll move forward a set amount while she's in the air. And then when she lands, she'll stop moving because you rack on the ground. So now I'm just doing some normalized... Uh, well, now I'm back to bunny hops. But I was doing some turnaround spin jumps. So if you're holding A, she'll automatically jump if you turn around. Now here's the hard part. You move slightly more when you turn while on ground than you do when you're off the ground. Uh, oh wait, we don't do that anymore. I changed the method, never mind. Um, so what I used to have to do was I would turn left on ground and then jump and turn to the right while in midair and then repeat that process like seven to nine times or something like that. So I wasn't paying attention, but as you just saw, power bombs. And if you look here, there's no number. Not really sure why, because I actually have 127, but the game thinks I can only hold zero, so I guess that's why there's no number, because it's like, oh, she has power bombs now, but she should only have zero, so it just doesn't put a number. Anyway, we have to do door skip again. Uh, there was something I was saying though. Oh uh, yeah, so you can do the turnarounds, the turnarounds to move yourself over a little bit, <coughs> but those have since been removed from the uh, method. Anyway, now we're going to door skip again. And now that we have power bombs, we're heading to X-Ray to make this whole thing more complicated. So anyway, back to my story. I discovered that you could do it in that heated room. And now the issue was, alright, well now we need to go get Varia. Because, you know, you can't do that without Varia. We gotta do like a really long X-Ray climb and there's gonna be a lot of running to the right. So we need Varia. And then that's when the complication came back because, oh whoops, you can't get to you know, Varia without supers, so now what do we do? Um, we could do a wrong warp to get behind the super blocks that lead to Crade's Lair, but we can't do a wrong warp to get back, so that's where the issue came. Because we could have, we could have just done that, and it would have been dandy. <coughs> but there's no way to get back, so that wouldn't work. So that was where I was held up for a while, and I was stuck. I kind of, like, lost interest. I was like, eh, it's not really working. Like, at that point, I kind of went back to checking rooms to see if I could remove my majors. But, I mean, I had already checked, like, most of the rooms. The only reason I was even checking Norfair rooms, like, I was... Snick told me to strictly stay in just Brinstar, like, areas that you could just go to with power bombs and missiles. And uh, Brinstar and Criteria. But I had checked, like, everything. I mean, not fully thoroughly. Like, I hadn't created it everywhere and checked every expedition, but, like... To be able to do that, it's a lot more difficult than you think. Like, you have to find a block to stand on. You have to x-ray. Sometimes x-raying doesn't change the BTS of the blocks. Um, basically, 0F44, the second two digits, is the BTS. So the BTS of 0F44 is 44. And then 0F is the block type. So I think 0F is a uh, bomb block. I'm not positive on that. Yeah, it's bomb block. Um... So it's a bomb block with BTS 44, and it just happens to do really weird things. It's not anywhere in the actual game, but it exists in the whole gamut of all blocks. And if you want to calculate how many possible blocks there are, it goes from 0000, 000 to FFFF. So have fun. I guess that would be 35566, huh? Maybe? I don't know. Anyway. So it's a lot more complicated than just like going in and going, oh, does this create this, you know? So I really didn't want to go and check all those rooms I had already checked even more thoroughly because it was already tedious enough. Like, it's very tedious checking those rooms. You, you don't understand. So I was like, nah, I'm done with this. Like, this is going to work. Either that or I'm not, I'm not doing this. So I, at that point, I kind of lost interest in it. I was like, this isn't, this isn't happening. So I, I let it go for a while. And then, like, I did a bunch of random stuff. And then someone, like, people kept mentioning it to me randomly, and then eventually I was like, alright, I'm gonna get back to testing this. Like, some random thing happened, and then, like, every now and again I'll have one night where I just randomly start testing things. And I was like, alright, I'm gonna get back to the 0% thing. And, no, that's what happened. I, I figured out the solution. 
like one day randomly I figured it out so I'm sitting like in the car or whatever doing something and then I realize like wait artificial varia is a thing so artificial varia is a block so it's it's like this zero f44 block where um, it's just some random block that wasn't used by the developers and like technically exists but really it doesn't because they hadn't considered being able to use it you know but we can create it using x-ray and it's basically I can't remember the exact thing anymore it's like zero C something or something like that uh, and it's basically a block that when you touch it it gives you varia and it's useful for some really weird 12% and I'm gonna go on a tangent real quick um, fun fact about when I was first learning this game I think I'm gonna farm here for a little bit fun fact about when I was first learning this game uh, I was like going on DnD and I was reading random pages <clears throat> like I was clicking the random button and just reading pages and I was reading about um, some low percents and at the time I really didn't have much knowledge of this game at all but I was reading about 12% the task one that gets ice wave and grapple and I was like, whoa, this is so cool. And artificial varia is included in that category because grabbing varia while you're getting rainbow beamed um, makes it so that you can pause during the rainbow beam. And you can skip all your E-Tanks and grab Ice Wave and Grapple instead. That way you'll be able to, uh, to pause, ab pause abuse through rainbow beam and not grab any E-Tanks as TAS. It's TAS only. And then Ice Wave and Grapple at the time were required for their own separate reasons. Like Ice was required to grab to X-ray climb up to where Varia would be. Grapple was required to create it. I mean, not Grapple to touch it, because if you touch it with anything other than your Grapple or your Beam Shots, like any projectile of Samus's, then the game will crash. And normally your Beam Shots don't appear out of bounds, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So Grapple would have to be what you used. And then wave was so that you could damage Mother Brain from out of bounds or something. Um, so yeah, they were all required at the time. So yeah, I now so that's like kind of a fun little connection that it made to my roots. Anyway, back to the story. So I, I realized like, oh crap, artificial varia. Why don't we just do that and then we don't need to grab supers, you know? So I messaged Snick and I was like, yo, what do you know about getting artificial varia in rooms that aren't Mother Brain's room? And he's like, oh yeah, I already have a method for doing it in par uh, in landing site. And I was like holy crap, dude, like, tell me, and I'll do it, and I'll, I'll set it up and everything. Um, now, this is the number one thing that was a holdup for me when I was trying to do the actual run of this. It took me, like, days and days to do the run just because Artificial Area kept breaking, and the ending up reason ended up being that uh, I had my stupid SDD SNES in because I wanted to reset using LR start select instead of like getting up every time because it's a hassle for me I have my microphone that like is on a stand and so I have to like duck under it and like hit the button and back up and it's just annoying so I want to just you know hit the buttons uh, well that has in-game hooks and the in-game hooks are messing up that that particular uh, I'm not sure if it was the out of bounds or the random memory addresses or what it was but that was annoying uh, not sure why I'm save loading here. Uh, oh right, you need to save load for the Varia. Um, I'm not positive about that, but I, I always do it just to be safe. Um, but yeah, so that was holding me up for a while. So now about the beam shots thing while I'm getting out of bounds. Um, so right now this is pretty standard 3% route. Or 2% actually. So I got the power bombs, the fake power bombs. Now normally what I would do here is go in the landing site and then do the game ending thing at about 45 minutes in. That's not that absurd. So I would do the game ending thing and that would put me back to the intro and then I would, it would delete my missiles and then I would, I would go end the game and I would only have morph and x-ray. Um, I grab bombs because I'm going to be deleting them but I could, I could technically get this door block doing a different thing. Which is really a, a different, really stupid thing. Uh, anyway, so this is like two percent, and then the other, the other two percent removal is morph and X-ray, which comes from doing the uh, zero F44. So right now we're diverging from two percent, and the rest of this entire thing is going to be all for zero percent. Uh, this room is actually broken, <laughs> uh, at least this area of it is. So I'm just walking around out of bounds. Uh, now we're back to a normal looking area. Uh, so sorry about that. 
I didn't realize that the hitbox viewer I was using had broken landing site. It's a common thing. So I need to drop down in this room four times. I need to drop through four copies of this room. And then on the fifth copy, I need to do some uh, x-raying and stuff. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating the varia block, and then I'm going to be jumping to a pixel-perfect location, maybe sub-pixel-perfect. I don't quite remember anymore. I think it's sub-pixel-perfect. It is sub-pixel-perfect because something I'm, uh, that you might see at the end, I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure if the uh, hitbox viewer shows it properly. But basically after you do the varia, you get spawned in this area that's like vertical lines. It's like stripes, and it's like alternating. It's like a vertical stripe of crash blocks, a vertical stripe of just air type blocks, vertical stripe of crash blocks, vertical stripe of air type blocks, and they're all like next to each other, you know. And so you have to get in the right subpixels so that you spawn in between, not spawn, you appear in between the uh, the air type blocks, or else you'll get like completely screwed. I just always thought that was kind of funny. So anyway, I think this is the last. Yep. So I'm going to x-ray here to create the block. And x-raying goes in like slow-mo when you're in landing site for some reason. Um, I'm not really sure why. Oh, it's because you're x-raying like a ton of blocks. Um, okay, so now we're going to go up here. Now we're going to run and clip through these blocks. Um, these This part's a little messed up. It doesn't actually look like this. There's a... Uh, I like looking... Shmemin, shout out to Shmemin. He likes to look at the uh, gameplay screen over there. Cause she's like walking on air and stuff. It's kind of funny. But yeah, so basically what happens is to check if Samus can run to the right, it goes, alright, is every single pixel to the right of Samus's whatever side pixel a solid block pixel? And then in this case it'll go, oh no, there's some towards her head. So it'll, it'll let her walk. It's, it's a pretty faulty method, but it allows you to do this. So now... Oh, sorry. What I was just doing right there wasn't to create zero, uh, to create the uh, area. That was to... So this area normally would be all, like, air, no blocks. But what I did was I x-rayed, and then I just created a bunch of random blocks there, and these ones are solid. So I'm going to do some normalized bomb jumping and normalized spin jumping and bunny hops and stuff like that. So that'll put me in the right position. So I think I need to do some turnarounds now. Or one turnaround. Yep. So now we're going to x-ray... And this is going to create the varia block. So the varia block is going to appear, I think, here. I think right here. So the thing about shooting that I mentioned earlier. Normally you can't shoot when you're out of bounds. Uh, your projectile just doesn't spawn because it's already off screen. Now we're going to do another normalized movement to get in the right spot. But in this case you can see the projectile spawned. So for some reason this area is close enough to the standard like room that it allows your shot to spawn. I'm not really sure why. So this is what I was talking about. So this row would be crash, this row would be air, and this row would be, or column. That column would be crash. So I, was, I spawned perfectly in between them there. Kind of funny. Alright, so now we got area, as you can see. Those are pretty exciting. That was artificial area. So now at this point, I'm like psyched because I'm like, oh, awesome. 0% is finally going to be a thing. So to get out of here, uh, I need to go over here. Uh, I don't remember why. Oh, because I, like, destroyed the out-of-bounds down there. So I can't run through any of that area because I'll just crash. So I need to come over here. And that thing that I did before, I actually created some, some door blocks. Uh, right there was actually crash blocks. So if I had gone to the left more, I would have crashed. So that doing that thing to create those solid blocks created a bunch of door blocks randomly. So I was able to just walk and get out-of-bounds here. And stuck in this wall. Now I can just actually climb up. And So now I'm actually in the copy of Parlor. See me falling through the slopes. I'm in the copy that's to the right of it. So I just hit that door transition. Now it thinks that I went through to that room. Alright. Some of this stuff I might not be explaining in too deep detail. Because like it's normally stuff. Some of it might be stuff that I'm just so used to. That it's not like it's anything special. Like door skip for example. That's just a thing. Like I never explained how that works. Because it's just a thing that like I know exists. Um, so anyway. We're really in our save now. Uh, for some reason. Oh, because I like destroyed all the out of bounds in part uh, in landing site. That makes sense. So reloading to fix that. And plus like all the graphics were messed up and everything. Alright, so now it's finally time to go meet what we've been go do what we've been trying to do this whole time. The number one goal. Get to that zero F forty four in uh 
in that first heated room. So now we're going to go out of bounds again to, to landing site. From landing site we'll teleport to the tube, and then from there we can get all the way to the Norfair room without supers. And we'll be good to go. Okay, once we get into the uh, primo room, I'm going to just skip to the... not skip to it, but move forward a couple seconds because I don't want to watch myself do random movement. This wasn't really optimized, so like a lot of the... most of the segments are just done by hand with a save state, but like for the parts where it's just like, oh, go to this area all the way over here, I just did it by hand, so like it's really slow and stupid. I don't feel like watching it. <laughs> but a lot of this stuff I just had scripts for, like that bomb jump, I just had a script for laying the bombs in the perfect IBJ rhythm. Um... Yeah, extra climbing, I have a script for that. But like this right here, this is just me doing movement. So, I'm just gonna skip it. Also, I'm not sure how the volume balance is right now. I kind of just like looked at it and went, okay, it's decent, and then started. So, uh, I apologize if it's horribly messed up. Alright, so real quick, we're just gonna grab high jump for this out of bounds. So, high jump, hello. And now it's time to start going out of bounds. Reload your file here to uh, fix the out of bounds for this room. This actually is kind of important. Out of bounds is determined by what rooms you go through. And I went through like 17 rooms right there. So I kind of had to clear it to make sure that I didn't mess anything up. Alright, so let's get inside this door. Alright, here we go. And now a really long extra climb. This is like a 12 screen climb. I'm actually going to skip this because I don't care about it. I'm not sure if this one's longer than the than G4 skip one. But... It's definitely close. Like within a few screens of it. I don't know why it's so long, don't ask me. Gotta ask like PJ Boy or Kajardin or something. Alright, I made it. And now we're going to do something that you probably remember from earlier, which is run to the right for a while. And I forgot to turn off my script. I was just sitting here. And I was like, oh. Because I had turbo on. <laughs> Alright, so run to the right. I actually have a script for this too. Notice how I just like perfectly down grab all of this. Or no, I don't even down grab it. I just jump. So we're going to run to the right for a while. We need to get the right exposition. <sighs> Alright. It's pretty exciting. We're finally going to delete all of our items, you know? So let me just tell you where we'll be once we uh, once we do this. Once we hit this block, we will no longer have X-Ray, High Jump, Morph, Bombs, Varia. That's it. We won't have any of those things. So it's five major items that we won't have anymore. Bam, gone. Now, we currently don't have any Power Bombs because... Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, for the Power Bomb thing... Picking up a power bomb drop will actually get rid of that because the game will go, okay, she's at 127, she so grab the drop, uh, move her up, and then it'll do a check to see if she's at or above her max. And then it'll go, oh yeah, she's above her max, so it'll set her to her max because that's just the way it works. Like if you're at 6, or if you're at 5 and you should be at 5 and you grab a power bomb drop, it'll go, oh, put her at 6, no, she's at her max, just set her to her max, you know. So, uh, actually it probably checks if she's at max, um minus one or greater and then it says alright set her to max you know um so anyway yeah so that'll break that but yeah we have missiles so after this the only thing we'll have that counts towards percentage is missiles so it'll be just missiles now thankfully there's already a method to delete missiles which I'll explain right now because we're just running to the right anyway um during the intro sequence there's um there's one of the scenes is Sam is shooting Mother Brain, like the old Mother Brain from Metroid 1, with missiles. Now the thing about those intro sequences is that they technically actually happen within the game, like it's part of your save file that they happen, and the Samus in those cutscenes is the Samus from the game. Like, it's it's actually a part of the game, and the game is just doing like their own, their own inputs to Samus. So, the thing about that is they give Samus missiles, and they say, alright, have her just do this, and then she does that. And then at the end of the intro, they don't want you to start the game with missiles, that would be weird. So they go, they just delete your missiles at the end of the intro sequence. 
So the useful thing about that is that we can use X-Ray to do a space-time type effect to send us back to the intro, and we'll lose our missiles. So that's perfect. Now let me just say something real quick. It is like pretty lucky how how perfectly all this stuff aligned. Like all the normalized movement that I do, and some of this is slightly outdated. Um, all the normalized movement I do is like perfectly set up so that it will work. Like very simply, there's no like weird shenanigans that I have to do, which I could do if I had to. But it's just so nice. So I'm gonna turn off high jump here. It makes some of the movement easier. But like I said, in general. Oh, you know what it does? You, uh, when we jump up to 0 F44, we can't reach it without high jump on. And so it just makes that a lot easier. So right now I need to get in the pixel perfect position. I think this is it. Yeah. So yeah, like right there. We just do a uh, bunny hop with high jump off. And then we do an extra turn around to the left. And do an air turn around to the right. And boom, we're in the perfect pixel. Like it's stuff like that where it's like, oh man. Like, it's like the devs knew, you know, it's like they kind of just knew. So this is going to be slightly normalized movement here. Turn high jump back on. So, there is a big hold up here for a while. So what kept happening was, if we grabbed this item, if we just jumped up and grabbed it, we would just get teleported, like, down, out of bounds, in the lava, and just get screwed. But what Snick realized was, if you expand your hitbox into the item, then what will happen is, you'll grab the item, and then before it shuffles, you grab it again. And what that'll do is, it'll give you a different shuffle. So what's going to happen here is, you're going to see the item box pop up twice. And this, uh, this is actually pretty difficult to do. So there you go, it pops up twice. And now it'll do a completely different shuffle for some reason. And here we go, here's another coincidence. This shuffle makes it so that we can just x-ray to the right, and boom, we get the perfect door block right in front of us, and we just walk into it, get sent here, and then get sent back. And we're just in the room now. Like, are you kidding me? It's It was just all so perfectly set up. So now I'm going to pause, and you can see I don't have any of the items. They're on right now, but I don't have them. So it's perfect. It also gives you the grapple icon for some reason. I'm not really sure because it thinks you grab grapple. Now we're going to head back up and we'll do the, uh, you know, it's like for old times sake, we'll do the, uh, the traditional, you know, 3% x-ray method for the end of the x-ray, for the end of the low percent run where you, you do that really specific x-ray and it, uh, it does a space time effect and it does a game ending effect. Nice way to end off the, uh, the legendary run. I'm just skipping all this because I don't feel like watching it. Yeah, the nice thing about this category, though, is that we get bombs. So we can do the, uh, the bomb jump for the out-of-bounds there. The thing is, having high jump, I thought at the time having high jump messed it up. So I'm doing the gamer method here to get door stuck, but having having high jump actually doesn't mess it up. Uh, I think I actually do it in my uh, in my zero percent video, or my actual run of it. But this is nice; it shows off my cool method. So this is one of those things where like Edie and Snick looked into it a little bit, and they realized it was really stupid, and they were like, "All right, this, we're not going to bother with this." And then they were like, "It was something that I asked them about," and they were like, "Oh yeah, we worked on that for a little bit. Try and figure it out if you feel like it." And then I, I took it on, so. Basically, just bring this gamer all the way around. It's the only gamer in this room that moves this direction off screen. I mean, it doesn't move off screen in this direction. Or at least the closest one. So we're going to set up the camera in a certain way. So he'll be stuck in a certain position that we want him to be in. And then I'll go to the left. Build up a certain amount of run speed and positioning, and it'll make me damage boost into the door. Bam. And then I go to turn off morph, and then I realize, like, wait, I'm stupid. I just turn on my script. <laughs> and 
There's not much to say about this part because it's like pretty, uh, pretty standard. It's pretty old. But basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the area where you would go for any percent glitched. Kinda into that same area, but a different block. And we're gonna modify BTS or modify uh, RAM addresses the same way you would in that. And we're just gonna change a couple things. We're gonna change the uh, the event flag thing so that it kind of resets everything that we've done, or at least going the uh, watching the intro and doing series part. And we're also gonna change it so that uh, change a different flag thing that says that we beat the game. And then what we'll do is we're gonna not appear in landing site because in landing site everything's exploding and we won't be able to get out. So we're gonna appear in the uh, not appear. We're gonna go through a transition into the tube room to the right of landing site, and that'll uh, that'll allow us to go into red tower and save the game. And then with the space time effect that currently in effect, um, when we reload our save, it'll give us the intro sequence. And then once we do the intro, the uh, the missiles will be deleted in series. Now once we get back on the landing site, the the end game trigger is still triggered. So once we get on the landing site, the planet will be exploding. And we can just press down when we get there to enter the ship again. Bada bing, bada boom, we made it. So that was just uh, that little extra thing I was talking about. I'm not going to go into detail about that. Just changing some uh, memory addresses. Now we're out of bounds, but we're, this is kind of annoying. It's, it's the landing set that I, I have in my brain already. You know, it's it's hard to navigate even if I already have it memorized because I can't see anything. So normally you would use like visual cues, you'd be like, Oh she appeared there and I'll go to the left. But you can't really do that even if you have it like pretty well memorized from doing it over and over again. And also a bunch of the backgrounds are just black. <laughs> it's pretty funny in this room. Because you can't tell where you are. Alright, so this is the final stretch. So we're just gonna save reload and then bam we did it funny thing about my 0% run I, I deleted my power bombs like my free power bombs after by grabbing a drop after I uh, used them like after I went down and did the 0F44 uh, the main one to remove my majors but the funny thing about that is that door shell above the elevator room sometimes is orange again after you do that space time thing so if it were I would have had to reset and then uh, do it all again like just that last out of bounds part uh, but yeah that was just for my run not for this so I'm gonna skip this intro cause I hate it so here's the part where she uses the missiles so right here that's like the actual Samus like with some pre-programmed movement and then sh see how she has missiles. So. They want to delete her missiles at the end of this. Which they do. And I technically could have grabbed as many missiles as I wanted, I guess. And as many major items as I wanted. So yeah, um, I forgot to mention the whole story of how this all came to fruition. Um, I did figure out a method to get super ammo without actually getting a max super count. But it was in that mushroom room to the right of the elevator room for Brinstar. So that was just me double checking to make sure I didn't have any missiles. Uh, the mushroom room to the right of the elevator leads to Green Brinstar and Criteria. So the thing about that was um, I could, like, if I were out of bounds, there was a pretty easy method. It was actually the most complicated out of bounds of all of the things, but I probably could have, like, finalized it more. I hadn't really looked into it that deep. But there was a way to use 0F44 to give myself supers and no ammo. In which case we could have done Red Tower or just actually grab Varia. So I was like, alright, we got this, Nick. I, I figured out all this stuff. And then I was like, crap, how do you get out of bounds in this mushroom room? Um, so then, because the doors, above both the doors is slopes. So you need to do a do uh, deep stuck, which is like what you need to do in a 80% glitch to get out of bounds in the landing site. And what I did there with the Keemer just a minute ago. You need to do a deep door stuck to be far enough back towards the transition to get past those slopes. Or else you'll just get pushed down the whole time by the slopes and you won't move up at all. 
But the thing is, at that point, I would have missiles, power bombs, and x ray. I wouldn't have anything else. And bombs. And so, to do a deep door stock, you need to have, like, some enemy to hit, or either speed booster. And I could grab a speed booster, but that requires supers. So, I'm not gonna wrong warp all the way to speed booster just to get, just to get speed booster so that I can get supers. So, the only option at that point was, or one of the only options, was a boomerang on morph. Where you do a mock ball, and then two frames before the door transition, you press the opposite direction of the door. So in this case, we were going to the left. So I did a mock ball to the left, and then two frames before I hit the transition, I did uh, an input to the right. And then the frame before the transition, I did an input to the left. And what that will do is it'll kind of like, um, it'll like wall jump check the door basically, but in more form. And when you get into the next room, you'll have all your speed will be going to the right for some reason. And you can just unmorph super quickly and you'll be able to x-ray climb. But it's like really stupid. There's a clip of it somewhere, you can ask Snick for it. So right here I'm just spamming down, she's going right into the ship. And that's time. It's the end of 0%. So I'll let this uh, credits and everything play out so you can see the 0% items thing at the end. But yeah, that's the whole thing. Shoutouts to Snick. Shoutouts to ED. Shoutouts to Total. Uh, he was... And 2Cat. Him and 2Cat were pretty big in the development of... Standard 9% glitch route. Or really the... Uh, the game end trigger with X-Ray. It's that. Plays a big part in low percent and 90%. So shoutouts to them. And then Snick obviously helped me with a lot. A lot of the stuff. And Animal Save, did you see that? I'll go back. See that? Bam, animal saved. Um, but yeah, Snick. Most of the development of this stuff was due to Snick. I just made everything work. Like, he figured out all the stuff. He was like, alright, these are all the things that you can do. Stuff them together to uh, make it 0%. It's kind of like, he bought all the ingredients for the cake and the oven and everything and said, alright, here's how to use the oven, here's what to do with the ingredients. Just figure out what, what combination of ingredients tastes really good. And I'll eat it. You know? It's kind of like that. Dear Force, oh, by the way, LOTAD stands for Low Optimization Tool Assist Demonstration. I'm 
Zero percent, baby. I was excited when I saw this, and it wasn't even my actual run, it was just my test run. And I was like, holy crap, it's zero percent. And then when I actually did it, I took a picture of it. It was awesome. Alright, and that's that. Thanks for watching everyone and being interested in this awesome thing.